Welcome to the Good Shepherd and the Child podcast, where we explore the spirituality of the Christian child through the method of the Catechesis of the Good Shepherd. I am your host, Carrie Mecki Lozano. Today, Lynn Worthington and Marty O'Brien join me on the podcast again to dive into two more of our characteristics of the Catechesis of the Good Shepherd that have to do with materials. So this is the third episode in a row of a three-part series that we are doing on materials. So our first one, we read a beautiful article by Jean Agobi, one of our founders, about how unique our materials are. And then the next episode, we had Linda Catalano and Diane Olson speak into four of our characteristics that have to do with materials. So today we're diving into these last two that have to do with materials. We have 32 characteristics of the Catechesis of the Good Shepherd that kind of define what we are as a work. And so I'll put a link in our show notes so that you can read all 32 of them. Today, we'll just really focus on these two. And we hope that this really sparks in you a deeper understanding of the value and the purpose of our materials. All three of these episodes help you with that. But we also really hope that they inspire you to want to put your hands on the materials to work with them yourselves, as well as really try and make some yourself. You can do it. I hope you enjoy. Lynn and Marty, welcome back to the Good Shepherd and the Child podcast. Thank you. Thank you. It's good to be here. I love having you guys on the podcast. It's so fun and y'all are so wise. So I'm so grateful for y'all to spend a few moments back on the episode with me. So really quick, in case anybody hasn't heard y'all's past episodes with me, please tell us a little bit about who you are. Lynn, you want to go first? Uh, sure. I'm Lynn Worthington. I live in a little town called Ballground, Georgia, which is the place where I grew up. Uh, I've been uh, a catechist and catechists of the Good Shepherd since my first formation in 1991. And I uh, worked in Durham, North Carolina at Immaculate Conception Parish uh, for about 25 years. And then I re sort of retired and moved back to Georgia. And I don't know how long I've been a formation leader, but I, uh, <laughs> but it gives me life. And so I keep going. <laughs> We're glad you keep going. That's really great. <laughs> <laughs> Marty, how about you? Howdy. Uh, Marty O'Brien. I am from Phoenix, Arizona. I and my husband learned about the Catechesis of the Good Shepherd in 1983. And we took our first formation course in 84 with Maria Christlieb and then with Sophia the following year uh, with level two and then level three with Rebecca. We uh, opened what was called a prototype atrium in Phoenix, Arizona, as an example of what you know, can be done. And we operated for, I forget how many years, 13, 17, I, I keep losing track, <laughs> until there were uh, plenty of parishes around the valley, a huge metropolitan area. So we were able to, um, well, our enrollments kept diminishing because more children could go to their own parishes. We opened in 84 and we closed in 2000, the year 2000. I've been a catechist since 1985 in the spring and doing formations since about 1991. And um, I love it. Like, just like what uh, dear Lynn said, it, it brings me life and I enjoy it very much. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm in a formation at the moment. And it does. It brings so much life. I was sitting there thinking about it today as I was sitting in the formation. This brings me so much joy just to be in this space. It's. I'm so grateful that we've fallen into this work. And I'm so grateful to know you two. We are too to know you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm excited about our conversation today. So we are going to dive into two of the characteristics, the characteristics of the catechesis of the Good Shepherd. So we have 32 total, and today we're going to look at just two of them that specifically re reference materials. And so I'm going to read it, the first one. I'm going to read it, characteristic number 21, and then we'll just kind of dive into our own personal reflections about it. Number 21, the material makes it possible for the catechist to assume his or her proper post 
as the useless servant. This expression indicates that the catechist has a task to perform, a role to fulfill, whose results, however, go much further from what he or she does, because the only teacher is Christ. What did you think of that one? Well, I, I first I, I want to just point out that the 32 characteristics are subtitled the 32 points of reflection. Mm-hmm. And so I understand that to mean that it is always my task as a catechist to reflect on these 32 points and to think about how I live them. Uh, I, mm-hmm. I sometimes say to people, if we were an order, a religious order, this would be like our rule. Yeah, <laughs> our rule of life, and, yeah. And, and so we we have to continue to think about the material uh, as the primary way the child encounters the word. Uh, we are the ones who proclaim the word. That is our primary task, the kerygma, uh, as it were. That's our job, is to proclaim it. But how important is it for us to get out of the way and allow this very beautifully designed and experimented with and uh, useful material uh, to give the ch- child their own opportunity to encounter God. Mm-hmm. That's what being a useless servant really means to me is that uh, I have a job and it's an important job that preparing the material is a big job. Mm-hmm. <laughs> But then my cutoff point is once I've made that proclamation to allow the Holy Spirit and the child to have this this meeting. Uh, and, and I'm joyfully able to watch it, to observe mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. Beautiful. Uh, the material, that's the first phrase we hear on there. I remember Sophia pointed out, they're not didactic materials. They And just like what Lynn said, they're merely an aid. They provide this opportunity for the child to continue uh, to further reflect on that text or liturgical moment that we just looked at or listened to. You know, of course, they allow us to remain peripheral. Mm -hmm. Um, What really stood out to me today or yesterday when I was reading this again is the word, the term, the post. The catechist must assume her proper post as a useless servant. And it made me think of a sentinel, you know, to stand guard at your post. And Mm. what a sentinel does is watch and wait, watches and waits. That's all the sentinel does. And as a catechist, to maintain my proper post, I'm observing and observing. And as these are the words of um, Dr. Montessori, and then John and I uses that same phrase, We watch and observe as the child slowly reveals herself or himself to us. And then Mm -hmm. when Jesus uses the term the useless servant or unprofitable, we're merely doing what we observe that needs to be done. And we, we prepare a material and then we watch and we just observe this child. And that's our proper post, watching and waiting. Mm -hmm. Just only doing what we see needs to be done. Nothing more. Yeah. Yeah, I very much see it similar to that as the material humbles us. Like I feel like it's telling us that the material takes the higher place than us, the adult that is in the room. We are put into that proper post as the useless servant. And it is the material that God uses to um, help grow in their relationship with the child. And like Lynn said, it's our job to proclaim the kerygma, proclaim the good news, to almost to to make that introduction, but then go back to that humble post. Mm -hmm. And then we just get the privilege of being able to watch the child and God and with through the use of the materials, um, have that silent conversation. Exactly. The humility comes in our not having a clue to the conversation, that you know, interior conversation that's going right. on. And 
as we all know, every once in a while, of a hint is given to us either through a drawing, a phrase of what has been happening. But with the littlest ones, of course, it is a great mystery. So right. the material allows us to stand back. Right. Is there anything else that y'all want to lift up about this specific characteristic? I think I would like to say that the material is appropriate to the young child. Mm. It is the way that they interact with and absorb and respond to the reality of the environment. And they don't respond to words. Even though they're they're in an absorbent period for language and they like listening to us talk, they do mm-hmm. actually like it most of the time. But the real work for them is this engagement with the material. So I think one of the things that makes our catechesis so unique and beautiful is our respect for the nature of the child. And the material is designed to touch that nature to call out to that nature to say come you know work with me be a part of be a part of this reality that we cannot see an invisible reality god is not we can't all you know god is an invisible reality but the material makes that invisible reality touchable and sensible Mm -hmm. and so as as regards our work how it it just is again it's like a smack in the face to say get out of the way <laughs> the material's got it here just mm-hmm. trust it and i i really think that a lot of times the catechists feel so busy in the atrium they feel like they don't have time to observe they don't because they're always trying to do something with the children a- and the truth is you have to trust the material If you're going to be a useless service standing at your post, like Marty said, you have to trust that the material is what the child needs. Right. If you can make the match, I mean, it's not like every material meets that match every time, uh, but it's there. It's there. And so we we really are useless in some ways. We must make the proclamation, but the material will do the work. Mm -hmm. Uh, if we put it in the right frame. I'm having like this image of like, it's our job to make the proclamation, which kind of makes it go on a surface level deep within us and the child. But it is the time that is spent with the material that takes it from a surface level, deep understanding to actually feeling it in your heart and it really going deep into who I am, who the child is. It takes working with the material, both, honestly, both us as the adults making the material as well as the child sitting and working with the material for it to actually go below surface level. Exactly. Oh, thank you, Lynn. You, I, I'm so happy you said that, that the way of the child is sensorial and to work with the child's hands, you know, the, the integration of hand and mind, hand, mind, and then heart. Yes, yes. All right, let's move on to characteristic number 25. The reasons why the catechist is requested to make the materials with his or her hands are to absorb the content more deeply, to combat hurry, consumerism, and excessive efficiency, to pace oneself more to the rhythm of the child and thus also or so we believe, to the working of the Holy Spirit, and to try to reach the integration of hand, mind, and heart. Hmm. I love that Marty already said that, really. (laughs) Uh, Because for us as adults, this frame of reference, this kind of reality is so different than the way adults work. Mm Mm-hmm. We work for efficiency, we work for product, we work for we work for, for such different things than children. And in some ways, it seems to me that when you read these things, you realize we make materials in order that we might do what Jesus said, turn and become like a child. Mm. I love the, well, of course, these four bullets are fabulous. The one that 
I will talk a lot about in a formation, especially in level one, is the second bullet to combat consumerism and even excessive efficiency. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, this is what we do in the catechesis is, is so countercultural. Yes. When we take our time, and it, it may mean the material is not ready that next week, but when we take our time, um, it allows the, us to use like a, a mother trying to feed her family. And if you have a spirit of poverty, well, then you open the cupboards. Well, what is there to fix for this family to eat? And as as parents preparing food, we become creative with what we have. Mm-hmm. And to combat that, we need to do that too. Trust the child. Trust the child's desire to linger upon encountering the religious message. And then to take that slow approach. What if we don't, and I know this happens, I've been there and that desire, but to be in a hurry because we have a lot of atria, we want a lot of materials that need to be made, just press that print button, boom, you know, press that print button. It begins to turn the catechesis into a program. Mm -hmm. And we begin very, we can, it's very subtle begin to think, oh, I have to have that next material for the next presentation, and then the next presentation. And when we can get rid of that, it's hard, but I try to talk about that a lot, to go with what we have at the time, and then, sure enough, we'll be bringing in that next material, maybe even blowing the paint, (laughs) helping it dry, Mm -hmm. but going slowly. And just like it says in the um, that bullet, we, be, we come to pace ourselves with the rhythm of the child who is in, in no hurry. They're not in any hurry, and therefore we shouldn't be either. And just trust the material that we just spoke about. Lynn spoke beautifully about that in about the last bullet. Mm-hmm. And that third bullet, what you're just referring to, pace oneself to be in rhythm with the child. And so we also believe the rhythm of the Holy Spirit mm-hmm. to like... Mm-hmm. I love that. I, I I feel like I could sit and ponder that a little bit more because I feel like that's so much of what the more, the longer and longer that I am a part of this work, the more that I realize it really is the child is in such sync with who mm-hmm. God is and um, the Holy Spirit. And so it makes total sense. I mean, if you look at all of creation, God paced himself. God took time. God put effort and love into everything that he created and so um and the child is so in sync with that he's so lined up parallel beautifully with that so for us as the adult to strip ourselves of those natural tendencies that we have taught ourselves over time to be more like Mm -hmm. the child and therefore being more like the holy spirit to slow ourselves down and integrate our hand, mind, and heart in that way of actually putting our hands on materials to make them ourselves, yeah. I'm sure that many of us have had that option, hit print or copy it (laughs) oneself. Mm -hmm. And it's true. Uh, I'm speaking now of a level three material. I entered an atrium and the propers of the mass had been printed, you know, computer generated. And I just decided, okay, we're going to show the children with a handwritten example, what they can do. And it was a beautiful experience, you know, writing, listening to the words of these propers of the mass. Um, And then we can offer to the children a real example of human work, not Mm -hmm. computer work. Dear friend and catechist whom I respect so deeply, Linda Catalano decided to handwrite, this is again in level three, every single card and prayer Hmm. on the colored base material. She told us that after she did that, her children began to work much more copying those prayers themselves. So it's just a great gift to oneself, but then um, an example to the children. Yeah. I mean, and we ask the children to work with the materials to absorb the content to so that they can absorb that content more deeply. So it only makes sense that for us as the adult as well, for us to actually sit down and work with the materials by making them, um, or maybe even just working with them, just like a child, that we are allowing ourselves to absorb the content more deeply. I know that for myself, the materials that I have handmade, I have a special relationship with uh, the kerygma that is proclaimed with those those materials because I, I really sat 
with that material and absorbed mm -hmm. the content more deeply. I find with the older children, this is now level three, they're so um, self-directed in many, many cases, I can actually begin working on a material or redoing one, you know, handwriting it. And they, they'll see me working and some come over and check it out. And I just say, oh, this is something we're going to look at later on. You're know, going to bring it in. And it's just the work, the work of the hand. I always quote St. Augustine to them, oh, our good friend St. Augustine says, there's nothing in my mind that wasn't first in my hand. And that's mm. more of writing, you know, so um, it's, uh, we have a work, that's what I always say, we have a work in the atrium, and it's for all of us. I like that quote from St. Augustine, there's nothing in my mind that wasn't first in my hand. I like yeah. that. Well, is there anything else from this characteristic that we want to lift up? I I think that one thing that when, when I first began this work and I realized, I mean, I had really, I don't think I really understood I was going to have to make all those materials mm -hmm. until, until I got to formation. And I was like, oh, dear, I, I'm an English major. I'm not an art major. Right. I, I mean, how am I going to make, how, and we didn't have much money, so how am I going to do this? I mean, what, what am I going to do? And I guess that one about the pacing oneself and to work the working of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit led my hands to do the things mm -hmm. I did because there was nothing in my experience that said I could even do this, mm -hmm. you know, uh, but I set my mind to it. And what Marty says about the older children, I really think I've experienced that to some degree with all of the children mm -hmm. when they have come to realize, even the, you know, five or six year olds have come to realize that they're that while it's not a perfect prayer card, it is a prayer card that I made. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they it's 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 not it's like we become partners. You know that thing and the first the one of the first characteristics is about is a place for adults and children to encounter God. I feel as though somehow that that sense that I have made this material makes the child and me a partner in a special way mm. true I, I think it and it certainly as they, you, they get older i find that that camaraderie that we have over making materials is uh is is something that's very precious and beautiful and i i actually think it helps to engage them the idea that i put forth the effort to to make these things and bring them in and then talk with them about it. It's like I gave them a gift. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. These materials were made for you. Yes. I, 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 I will tell you a, one silly story. Uh, are you, you're, I'm sure you're familiar with in level three, the memorial. Mm -hmm. oh, yes. Okay. You know, those two long charts that go down the side with all the people and the different clothes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Okay, so I cut those things out with little tiny snippet scissors one night and glued them down until I got on a midnight. I was barely able to see. I, they were so <laughs> tiny. And the next day, just what Marty was saying, I brought it in to do it with the children. I sat down. This is a group of children I had been with since they were four. So they knew me really well. I put it down. I said, now look. I'm about to show you something new. I worked on it till midnight last night. You are going to like it. You, <laughs> you better like it. <laughs> You're going to like it. So, I mean, you know, they knew I was kind of joking. But we did the meditation. And when we got to the end of it, a little girl named Mary said, Miss Lynn, I really do like it. I really do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you know that's just the kind of experience that I think that we when we really when we let our own weaknesses be a part of this I, I think that that's part of the way that God uses us with yeah. the children certainly yeah. the best part you might say is when I make a mistake and I'm writing making a prayer card or whatever and then I do what Jonna did. I saw her. She gave us a material once. I just cut out a little piece of paper and put it over the mistake <laughs> right on top. And then the thing is, I point it out sometimes, or they'll see it. But they know it's a great example of don't crumple the whole sheet of paper just for mm. that one word. You know, and, Yo, oh, that's a really good idea. Yeah, mm -hmm. I like that. Oh. What an or indirect the, lesson. Um, have you seen in some of these gorgeous you know, books from the 
Millennium Bible, the St. John's Bible up in Collegeville, um, when the calligraphers would leave a word out, they would very creatively like put a little rope, you know, from that spot and, and have the rope <laughs> down, down from the margin. There's a guy, this guy's dangling down and he's holding the little card that has the word that was left out. So uh, just showing them how we can be humble and and enjoy our work and not feel that it's the end all, you know, be all end all. It's just a way mm-hmm. to, again, hand it, it also. It just says that we are human, Marty. Yeah, right. I mean, it says we are human, mm-hmm. not a computer, not a printer. We're human. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, Praise I think God. the fear of being perfect and not being able to make a perfect material does hold right. some people back from actually embracing this of why we as the adults should be making the materials with our hands. Mm-hmm. And again, Linda Catalano is so good at this. She is so good at empowering people to be able to say, no, you could cut out those sheep. No, you don't need to buy that. I can sh- help you make that. You are capable. Mm-hmm. And I've heard right. over and over adults say, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> I mean, I even say that. And she says, yes, 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 you can do this. Let me show you. And mm-hmm. it's so empowering. But like, I can use a scroll saw. I can do it. I've learned to use a scroll saw and a Dremel. And yes, we can do it. It's maybe not as perfect as somebody else would make it. But mm-hmm. I made it with my hands as a gift for these children. And my absorption of the content has skyrocketed mm-hmm. since I've really embraced this. Sure. And there's nothing to say that you cannot do this with the help of other friends. Sure. Maybe who aren't even catechists, but you're there showing them what you're doing and say, okay, you do these guys over here uh, to have your little community uh, mm-hmm. watching you as mm-hmm. the model. Um, that's how you can get help when you need to make, I have seen it, three complete sets, identical, three identical sets of materials uh, for the catechist to be the model and say, okay, let's go for it together. It's a beautiful community building work as well. I agree. It is, and it is. It, it helps us to kick off those conversations that are so meaningful and helpful. Uh, even if you invite some parents to help mm-hmm. you in those community, yeah. uh, you know, materials. I've I've done that before. I I, I just put out an ad in our parish bulletin and said, if you like to paint, color, or draw, come see me. Mm-hmm. And they, they would come, and then I would have an opportunity to share with them uh, a, some a meditation from the atrium and say, now, this is what the children are going to do, and this is what we need for you to do. So it can also be a great way, I think, uh, to open the eyes of adults uh, to that spiritual richness that we desire to share about the children. I completely agree. It's a great way to get the community involved in what we are doing with the children. I have a friend who um, I invited, she was very good at painting. And I invited her to help me with the visitation work and to to create the background for it. And she did was was not familiar with the visitation scripture at all. And but after working with this scripture, she has a very deep relationship with that scripture now because of working with this material yes. for me. <laughs> and so inviting her, she never has become a catechist. She probably never will. And that's totally fine. But inviting her with her specific gifts into helping me make this material helped her grow. And so that was a really beautiful encounter. Yes, that's sweet. But yeah, I'm all about those material making nights. You throw in some wine and some snacks and you invite the community <laughs> and some amazing people show up to, to come who have beautiful handwriting or the people who are good at sewing, they love to help. Or I go to the Knights of Columbus and say, who's a carpenter? I need some carpenters. Come help me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's been really beautiful to see a community come together to help support this work with all of their gifts and talents that they really want to share. They just need to be invited face to face. The work of the Holy Spirit is the work of unifying. And this work does that. Yeah. Well, is there any last minute thoughts that either of you have to share before we finish today? Um, I don't, nothing more from me. I think we've, I've said everything I could. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I, th- I think, I think that I don't have anything else to add except thank you, Carrie. Well, yes. thank you both. I really appreciate you, you sharing your, your wisdom with us today and taking the time to, to be with us. Thank you all for listening to this week's episode of the Good Shepherd and the Child podcast. 
in our show notes, you will find some links to some episodes that I have done in the past with Lynn and Marty. I also will put a link in there for you to be able to read all 32 characteristics of the Catechesis of the Good Shepherd. I also want to remind everybody that we have the audio version of the Religious Potential of the Child available. So if you would like to purchase access to that audiobook, I have step-by-step instructions on how to get access to that in our show notes. This podcast is sponsored by the United States Association of the Catechesis of the Good Shepherd. If you would like to know more about the Catechesis of the Good Shepherd, or if you would like to become a member, please go to cgsusa.org. Thank you all for listening. We will see you in two weeks. Go and fall more deeply in love with God.